Yesterday, while browsing the internet, I saw such a beautiful Linux distribution. It worked very simply, beautifully and quickly. Now let's examine this operating system and see how good it is. Now let's first look at the website. Features the download, blog community and wiki section. On the far right, the Chinese YouTube and GitHub page welcomes us. I don't know what this is. When we click on the sun icon next to it, it switches to light and dark themes. In the language options, there are only Chinese and English. When we scroll down the page, we see that the operating system is Linux-based. He says that the system is fast and has a nice appearance. We will download it and take a look. They put a download button and a separate button to go to the GitHub page. You can go and look at the source codes. When we go to the bottom, it shows the features of this distribution that are different or more noticeable than other Linux distributions. How what are they? Better interactions, it says we redesigned the entire system. Our security and stability. Since it is Debian based, yes, it could be stable. A smooth user interface, it says I can do a lot with less hardware. A new global menu. I really don't understand what this is. When we click on the download button, the download page appears. And as we see, the new version was released in February 2025. So it continues to receive updates. The ISO size is 2.5 GB, which I think is a good size. E. I tried to download it from his own site, but the site gave an error. So I tried to download it from SourceForge, as he suggested, and it downloaded without any problems. When I start the operating system, I see a boot menu like this, and there are three options but I didn't understand anything about all three of them being the same. I didn't care much because it wasn't a very important issue. I'll press enter from the first one and move on. Let's see what happens. And a screen like this appeared. Without further ado, I proceed with the installation and install the operating system. It is no different from a standard Linux installation. It installed flawlessly in 7-8 minutes, which was faster than I expected. Now let's reboot and examine the system. We came across a grub menu like this. It looks like the grub menu in DP OS. When we press enter and open the system, the logo of the Lingmo operating system appears and it loads the operating system in the background. And even though I opened the system in a virtual machine, it opened very fast. I was even surprised. It is fast, as it says on its website. When we first look at the top panel, we see a panel that is in the style of macOS or GNOME, but a little different, minimal and stylish. The only thing I don't like is that the date and notification panels are combined. I press the clock, but the notification panel opens. Now let's look at the different menu written on the website. How is it? It doesn't have much difference with the GNOME menu, the only difference is the transparent background. It uses the KDE application store called Discover. It's a strange operating system. It's as if GNOME, KDE and Dipping mixed the desktop environments and presented it to us. It has its own notepad, but how useful is it? This is debatable. And how many features can we expect from a notepad anyway? After all, it is a notepad. In short, as far as I can see, Two of the applications that come with the operating system are KDE's applications. The rest are applications that come with all systems. The system is not very bloated. In fact, it is more de-bloated than I thought. The only application that comes pre-installed and does not appeal to everyone is Inkscape. You can also delete it. Also, when we look at the operating systems, idle RAM and CPU usage, it is very good. Rich in visuals and animations, but it only uses 1.2 GB of RAM, which is very good. And the operating system itself only takes up 8 GB of space on disk. We can also switch between dark and light themes with a single click. When we look at the settings, it's like we've entered the settings of the GNOME desktop environment, but with more options. As far as the appearance part, it comes with standard settings such as screen resolution, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, screen refresh rate and others. 
Actually, there are not many options in the Appearance section. We can change the desktop icon size, also the system font and text size, color and animation type. Also here we can switch to dark and light themes and automatically change the desktop photo accordingly. It comes with very nice wallpapers, I really liked it. We are also given options for the dock section. Here we can make the dock style full and resemble windows, or we can move the dock left and right, and similarly, we can make the dock bigger or smaller. We can also choose to always stay on screen, always hide, or smart hide options. But to be honest, smart hide doesn't work very well. The user section is the same as all Linux distributions in standard form. Unfortunately, it is not possible to adjust the notification settings according to the application. There is only Do Not Disturb mode. In the sound section, there are only volume increase, decrease and microphone settings. In the mouse section, it gives us five different mouse themes. The only difference between them is the color difference. And in the mouse settings, we can turn on and off, left hand and natural scrolling features. And we can change mouse speed. There isn't much difference in the date and time section compared to other distributions. What could have been different anyway? There is nothing different in the settings after this. Standard things like language section, default applications. Only in the battery section, you can put the operating system in performance mode or stable mode. How much difference does it make? I don't really know. In short, is the operating system very good? Not that good. Will I use it? I can't. But let me tell you something. Everything written on the website is true. Only I still don't understand the menu part. Generally, it is a good operating system. But how will it work? Will it be good and we can only know its problems with long-term use? But after all, if we consider that it is Debian-based, it can be stable. Yes. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and comment on this video to support me and for more distro introduction videos. If you subscribe, you will help me a lot. Goodbye, see you in other videos.